Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here with you. I want to talk to you today about fluoride. And to give one big overview, this has been a huge topic of controversy. Many big debates take place as to whether or not municipalities should fluoridate their water, or if they do, if they should reverse this or not. And the, the data around that has been conflicting and, and ambiguous and confusing. I'm going to focus really tightly on the roles that fluoride plays for thyroid disease. Pretty straightforward stuff. <laughs> Pretty simple. No good controversies. So the general idea is what fluoride does physiologically, you know, what it really does within the body. And the main thing it's doing is that it's affecting our growth of bone tissue and connective tissue. So bone, tendon, ligaments are all things that are formed from fluoride. Well, not from fluoride, but fluoride's part of the whole matrix required for them. And this has become most thought of in terms of dental health and, and dental enamel. The data about fluoride's effects upon cavities and cavitation has been ambiguous. So topical fluoride clearly has positive effects upon cutting the risk of cavities, especially the gels that are used in dental treatments. Those definitely make a big difference. Fluoridated toothpastes, if they're used in the way they're recommended, like a few times a day and actually not rinsing your mouth afterwards, they would help dental cavities. As they're commonly used, not a strong, clear association. Then we have fluoride in the water, also not a clear cut case as far as being helpful for dental cavities. But again, our focus is really on thyroid disease. <laughs> there has been negative data that's of little controversy about fluoridated water and stomach cancer risk. So there's that. But now on the thyroid. So your thyroid, let's think about how it's working. And overall, your, your thyroid is working by taking in iodine, which is concentrated and made into hormone, and then releasing these active hormones. Now, things that disrupt that cycle, either too little or too much iodine, or things that block its uptake, they can be parts of the cycle triggering autoimmunity. Furthermore, things that delay iodine uptake can simply slow the thyroid independent of autoimmunity. Fluoride does that. <laughs> Fluoride and lithium are two minerals that compete with iodine very directly for uptake. So when you've got above a certain amount of fluoride in your system, you'll take that up instead of iodine, and you'll make the gland less able to make hormone. In fact, for many years, we did not have good, well, we don't have great medications, but we didn't have good treatments for slowing hyperthyroid disease, like Graves. And fluoride was used for that. It was very effective. If you take a mega dose of fluoride, upwards of 10, 20, 30 milligrams per day, not advised without guidance, you can often slow the thyroid. However, for people that don't want to slow their thyroid because it's already slow or because it's a bad thing in general, this can make all that worse. So where do we get fluoride from? Well, big sources would be fluoridated water. You know, there's a long list of reasons why you don't want to drink the water out of the tap the way it comes into your house. You really want reverse osmosis or some version of purification, and that's adequate for also reversing fluoride exposure. We also get this from dental treatments. Uh, if you've had big risks for dental cavities, you may consider dental gel treatments knowing that there could be an effect upon slowing the thyroid. If that's not been a factor for you, do maintain dental hygiene. Practices like oil pulling, like just good use of water pick to keep bacterial levels low, good regular brushing, using little picks between meals. These things are huge for lowering the bacterial load. You wouldn't need to resort to fluoride. The other thought is that big sources would be fluoridated toothpaste. Now, the amount of fluoride in a toothpaste is about one milligram per gram. Before coming on, I grabbed my little gram scale and put a squirt of toothpaste on there, and it's roughly a gram, roughly a thousand milligrams, and it's about a thousand parts per million fluoride. So you crunch all that stuff together and you've got about one milligram of fluoride per common amount of dental, dental toothpaste. So don't eat that. Do you absorb much otherwise? Mm, not much, but in the case of your thyroid, I would encourage avoiding that. You know, we want nothing that's really slowing you down to be coming in your body on a regular basis. So where else does fluoride come from? Well, some of the higher sources are things you may not expect. Uh, teas do contain fluoride. You'll find the most of this in black tea, and the least of this pretty minimal amounts in white tea in younger plants. Green tea somewhere in between. 
I would definitely say that those who are not caffeine sensitive, there is still net benefit from tea, especially, I've always loved white tea is my favorite one to recommend, but white or green are pretty reasonable. Where else would you get fluoride from? There are some foods that contain varying amounts of that. None are all that big. Uh, but one thing that has quite a bit are things that contain gelatin, cartilage, or bone tissue. They're all dense sources of that. So there was one big study on chicken, chicken nuggets. You know, this is kind of a ghoulish topic, but those, those are mechanically deboned. So machines are just like tearing all the stuff off the bones. And what happens is you get bone residue in what you're consuming. And those are shown to have possibly toxic levels of fluoride when it's mechanically deboned. Now, no one's talked about this or thought about this much, but this is also a concern for bone broth. You will get fluoride from that. There was one study done in Thailand on various collagen products. So in Thailand, they talk about bone broth as a beauty aid. And possibly there's a benefit to skin collagen, a small one, but a possible one. And they took many different collagen products in the market and they measured their fluoride contents. And what they found was that almost all had unsafe levels of fluoride. And we're not even talking about a little bit that may slow your thyroid. We're talking about levels that are just not safe, that get to be toxic. The other thought would be gelatin products. So bone broth, gelatin products, these would have unsafe high levels of fluoride. And if you're concerned about thyroid status, they're very important things to avoid. The other big thing would be fluoridated bottled water. Now some bottled water is advertised for having added fluoride for like babies type use, uh, but others don't advertise that, but still contain pretty high amounts of fluoride. So bottled water, good to avoid. You know, it's just a it's just an icky industry and in how they work and the things they do and all the environmental impacts upon what they're doing. Have reverse osmosis at home, and when you're out on the go, have a water bottle with a good carbon filter on that. Uh, my son, actually, we're we're in Scottsdale. He's going to a very good school. We're concerned about those things. We received a notice saying that several of the school drinking fountains were found to have unsafe levels of lead, and he had already been in the habit of bringing a water bottle with a built-in straw that goes through a charcoal filter, a carbon charcoal filter. And I'm kind of a nut about him using that. And we saw this notice and I said, son, this is one of the reasons why. I didn't know it would show up in your school, but thankfully you've been using your water. So don't buy water, have a bottle with you that you can get water from, from a tap or from a fountain, and then have that set up so it filters it before you drink it. You know, great habit. So fluoride action steps, if you're managing your thyroid, avoid denser sources of that. For dental purposes, you can do better without it as well. There's a lot of great fluoride-free toothpastes. Also take a look at SLS, sodium lauryl sulfide. That's a good thing to avoid in toothpaste, you know, possible carcinogen and irritant. And overall, you can do all those things you would do with it in other ways. White tea is a safe option. If the concern is about leaky gut and helping with that, Honestly, the effects of resistant starch are much greater on the, the bacterial flora than we would see the effects upon bone broth. So you can get good effects from resistant starch and many good vegetarian versions of bone broth that I've written about. So Dr. Christensen here with you. Take great care. We'll talk in really soon. Bye-bye.